just going to um, briefly turn on my webcam so you can see me. I'm going to wave hello and I think we're going to be um, doing the rest of the session without me on camera. Hi everyone, um, my name's Darren Maddock. Thank you for joining me for this presentation and um, thank you to Sarah Stewart for the invitation and thank you to everyone who's involved in this event. It's a huge privilege to be part of this and um, I just want to say happy International Day of the Midwife and I just want to thank all the midwives out there for the amazing work you do for the men, women, children and families in our communities all over the world and um, for the amazing role that you play at birth which is such an important space uh, to keep um, and for doing that with the care, the passion, the commitment and the talent that you do. So um, yeah, thank you very much. I'm going to go off camera now and uh, continue uh, the rest of the presentation without the camera. So tonight I'm coming from Lismore, which is in northern New South Wales, the state of Australia. And just an aside, during the month of May, our uh, town is formally or officially known as Lovemore. So I thought you'd all like to know that tonight, that I'm coming from Lovemore tonight. So first preparation for Dad. Um, I thought I might just start introducing myself really and um, share a little bit about me just to uh, give you a bit of context around the work and the topic. So um, I'm a father. I've got a son who's going to be five years old in June. Um, but I've played, I guess, a number of different roles in a fathering context. Uh, I was a stepfather um, to twins for about seven years, a boy and a girl. Um, and I've been a son, I've um, been a grandson, um, I've, my, my parents were separated and I lived, in the, uh, I lived with my father for five years um, and now I'm a single dad myself so I've had um, a fairly vast array of fathering experience and I guess that's, what, uh, that's something that I do bring um, to my role uh, as uh, what I refer to myself as a, as a fatherhood mentor and that's the role that I play in my community and um, something that I'm very keen to see uh, become um, more, um, you know, more common in more communities, in more places. So um, my professional background and training, um, I've been on this path for about five years now or a bit longer. I began in the birth scene uh, during the pregnancy of my son and um, I worked as a natural birth um, advocate for the Natural Birth Education and Research Centre, which was in my community. And um, that just came about um, as a stroke of serendipity and um, fatuity, really. Um, I ended up, um, it, well, we ended up uh, making an arrangement with the centre that I would um, give my time in exchange for our midwifery fees which was an amazing agreement to make, an amazing experience and opening for me to become involved in uh, birth in that way. So that was the beginning. Um, since then I've gone on to do um, some men's work and men's uh, working with men, uh, professional training. And after doing that training, I realised that my clear point of focus was working with fathers. I loved being a dad. And uh, the more that I observed other fathers and other spaces of fatherhood in our communities, I realised there are significant gaps there. And it didn't take me long to hone in on the big gaps around um, the expected and new dad space. So from there, it's, um, it, it's been about, uh, yeah, almost five years of being on this path of working exclusively with, an ex with expected and new dads. Um, so I do get to come into contact with um, a lot of expecting new dads now. 
I conduct uh, dad, what I call dad's chat sessions within hospital-based antenatal classes. Um, I run or facilitate uh, fatherhood preparation courses and uh, I facilitate birth preparation workshops for dads and I also uh, co-facilitate um, couples workshops, pregnancy couples workshops in my community. So now I'm just really looking to um, to take this wider. This is um, this is much bigger than me. So I'm really keen to um, share what I'm doing, uh, to uh, share what I'm learning, and um, in hopefully inspire more men to get involved in this work and uh, to, to see more fatherhood mentors. Uh, working in other communities around um, around the world, because um, I believe that the father could, um, well, the, the issue of fatherlessness is, is um, probably one of our biggest global issues. So uh, the idea is is to um, to engage dads early and, and as early as possible, and to bring them in um, and to appropriately engage them uh, and educate them and mentor and support them on their journey to becoming dad. So this is what this is all about. Um, it's uh, sharing some of my experiences and learning and perspectives from the work that I've been doing and some of my ideas about where it can go and where we need to take it. So um, that's where we're heading tonight. So um, I'm happy to take any questions at this point before we move on. Okay, doesn't look like we've got any questions coming through, so I'm just going to keep going with the presentation. So the next image, I love this photo. I love it so much. Um, it to me, it just speaks to what birth can be, um, and obviously there is a dad here in this picture, and um, it just speaks to me. Birth is a whole of family event, and it's just good to have a reminder of that, that birth is a whole of family event and that um, I, I feel like more and more now that um, we're, we're really starting to understand um, on quite a profound level that dads are an important part of the picture and I think that's why there is such a growing interest in how do we how do we make the changes that we want to see that we need to see how do we how do we bring dad in how do we make it work and uh, I love the curiosity that's out there now I love the interest I love the the directions that we're taking uh, towards um, embracing uh, men's involvement uh, in birth and um, when you think about it, there's only been a fairly recent phenomenon. We only need to go back one generation usually and or now and um, many men weren't present or weren't even allowed to be present at the birth of their children. Um, and I'm talking in modern Western type cultures. I know um, there are cultural differences uh, to be acknowledged. But um, I guess I'm speaking in my culture, the Australian culture, it's only been a fairly recent phenomenon that, that men have actually been involved. And this is part of the reason why there are gaps and why we're still learning about uh, dads and birth is because uh, we're coming from a time where things have changed and they've changed really quickly. So now we're catching up. We're, we're trying to gain knowledge. We're trying to gain experience. We're trying to gain insight. Um, and masculinity is, in, is evolving so uh, and fatherhood is evolving in parallel with masculinity as well so we're, we're learning so much right now about men and um, how to engage them how to uh, support them so um, just moving into the next so in Australia over 90% of men are now present for the birth of their child so that's a huge rate from where we are 
where we were just a few decades ago. And um, the way that uh, things happen now, the way that we do birth uh, here, that's typically the primary support person for their partner during birth. So in that respect, they have a hugely important role. Um, and we need to acknowledge that the dads will influence the birth outcome positively or negatively. And I think this is where uh, there's a big point of focus and this is where it really becomes important around engaging, educating, mentoring and supporting dads to be at birth um, because they can have such a huge impact and um, they can have an amazingly positive impact and they equally they can have a, a very negative impact and um, as midwives, as birth keepers, birth workers or anyone who's come into contact with anyone post birth, you're probably aware of both cases. So it's just so important that, that you know, for this reason that um, we, we keep focusing on uh, dads and ways that we can better support them than we are doing now. And so attachment science is telling us that um, and has told us that it's not only mum, mums and babies that bond at birth, it's dads and babies as well, it's families that bond at birth. So what we really need to be doing is supporting dad to be at birth in such a way that we can maximise these opportunities for, for bonding at birth. So we, we know about skin to skin and we know about oxytocin and we know about how that peaks at this time right after birth and we know the opportunity there. So what we need to be doing is supporting uh, supporting more more men uh, to bring their presence to the birth space so they can maximise this opportunity for them. And I believe, it's, it's my belief, that this is a huge opportunity for bringing men in, for, for creating a lasting and lifelong bond in the birth space. So when we talk about the issues of, um, of fatherlessness and um, father absence. I believe that if we can, we can do birth better. We can, we can have dads um, engaged for longer and you know for life. And that's that's what we want. That's what we need. That's what our communities need. So um, I believe it all begins here. That's the re one of the main reasons why I have um, committed to focusing on the expecting a new dad space. Any questions? Okay, back to you, Dan. Thanks, Trish. So also, too, um, Dad will be a key figure in the birth story, and the birth story is something that lives with the mother forever and so this is um, just another important element for for dads that um, in terms of keeping families together in terms of um, creating stronger families if we can support them better in the birth space we can we can have experiences of less traumatic birth we can we can send families um, home if they're not birthing at home um, with um, birth stories that are more harmonious and, and more gentle than um, than perhaps what we're doing now because men are playing a more effective and a more confident role at birth. So masculinity and fatherhood has evolved and my perspective is, after doing this work for a number of years now, is that the services and support around fatherhood and the birth space um, haven't kept pace with this evolution. So what we're, what we're seeing is over 90% of men now um, 
present at the birth of their child, but their services and support that we're offering uh, in terms of engagement, education and support throughout the pathway um, for a man like a man during um, the the antenatal uh, period and in the birth space and uh, in the postpartum period don't reflect this evolution. So what we have are these significant gaps in policy practice and what I mean by experience here is, and I think this is part of the issue, is there's not a, like as many people as we need who are actually skilled at engaging, educating and supporting men working in these spaces to be able to um, to pass on their, their learned wisdom, their knowledge, their, their, uh, their anecdotes from the front line to other people uh, in the workforce to actually build that experience base because it's, we're still in the early days. So that's what we're really needing. It's what we're really calling for right now is um, I feel like we're, we're calling for more investment, greater investment in this area. We need to uh, acknowledge and recognise the importance of this time, this space, um, and the evolution that has occurred, and acknowledge that with investment. And so, what we need, what we need, is more um, father-focused uh, and father-friendly uh, engagement, education, and support in the expected and new dad space. Are there any questions at this point? So, based on my experience, so on to the next slide. Based on my experience here in Australia, um, what I've observed um, and what I've heard through the stories of other men is, is that they do feel under-engaged, under-educated and under-supported on their journey uh, through um, becoming dad. And um, so what, what I've observed is that most expecting dads, like this is the extent of their preparation, so they'll, they'll go to childbirth edu education classes with their partner and that is typically the only birth preparation that a, that a man will do. So um, some will obviously go beyond that and and do some reading, and most will do some reading. So that will that will vary um, from from man to man as to the depth and extent of what he reads, whether it's just internet only or books or both. But um, in terms of uh, actual engagement and education and even support uh, it's usually only they're only usually getting that through um, childbirth education classes and obviously if they attend any appointments as well so um, my one of my big points here is that anyone who comes into contact with an expert and a new, a new dad has a huge amount of influence um, over his experience and that can be um, that can really make a profound difference for him because father the the rite of passage of fatherhood has become so diluted that most men uh, most men's preparation for becoming a dad is going to childbirth education classes. So that that's really what he where he goes to get his sense that he's becoming a dad. Um, he's also there to to learn about birth, obviously, but this is also um, really the the rite of passage of becoming a dad as well. So um, this huge and profound time of um, change and transformation um, often is being experienced within um, the 
the health space within the antenatal education classes, appointments, for, for him that's pretty much what he's getting. So um, anyone who comes into contact with a, with a man at this time is, is having a huge amount of influence. And um, the, my experience, I, I do get to go to um, antenatal education classes at my local hospital to, uh, uni well, it shouldn't be unique or, or that groundbreaking, but there's not many places that are doing it, not many opportunities where uh, dads only are being engaged in that space or in that way. So I go into classes and I take them aside um, for uh, an hour and we have a dad chat and I open the space up to them to um, check in with them to see how they're doing, to see where they're at around the, their um, journey to becoming dad and birth preparation. Um, I get them relating to each other so that they start to build a group dynamic within their antenatal class group. And then why I've got the opportunity of being in that space with them and building some rapport with them, uh, offer them a place in a fatherhood preparation course, which is government funded and run in this area. So it's a free program. So we use the health space as, um, as a pathway to bring them into that program. And, um, the program is funded by the Australian Federal Government um, Department of Faxia. So this is an, a great example of um, two government departments um, with, I guess, separate budgets and agendas working together. Um, and it works very well. It works very, very well. And I'm grateful that um, the maternity, um, maternity care People at my local hospital really understand and value this work. Um, it's been nothing but open doors. I mean, it has taken a while to build this partnership, um, but now that we have it, um, they understand what we're doing. We have great relationship, and I work closely with the midwives and educators um, to develop our sessions and plan our sessions and coordinate them and attend and deliver them. So it works fantastically. and. Um, yeah, as an aside, the head of um, midwifery at our local hospital is is a man, is a and he's a dad, and I think um, he just really gets the value of this work as well, which is fantastic. So, does anyone have any questions? I'm keen to answer some questions. Any questions out there? Okay, we've got a question from Sarah. Okay, yeah, so has it been translated? Have we um, formally evaluated the work? We do um, evaluate the fatherhood preparation program that um, is delivered in this region. It's been running now for the past seven years, um, which is quite groundbreaking. So um, it began um working out of the community health space and then about four years ago like I had this vision that I really needed to be more community based and um connect more in with um other community services and um develop its own identity in that way. Uh and I just saw it as something that um it could just become part of the services and support the infrastructure that was in, in our community and that's how it's evolved now. So we still maintain a very close relationship with our um, our regional health service. But in terms of um, evaluation, we, we do a post-course evaluation and um, we've got um, a very good track record in terms of um, maintaining engagement from dads throughout. It's a three session course over three weeks and um, the feedback is fantastic. We bring them back for a reunion, which is an opportunity for them to, to reconnect and uh, post-birth and share their birth story. 
um, and again uh, continue to build the community with um, some of the fathers that they've shared this experience with, which is also a really important part of it as well. Um, I have a couple of questions there from um, Tabitha. Yeah, okay. okay. So um, question from Tabitha. Um, my advice for helping dads in the midst of a traumatic birth dealing yeah, with postpartum, I guess two different things. Um, ex advice to dads experiencing, experiencing a traumatic birth. When I'm talking to dads about preparing for birth, one of the, the biggest things that I focus on is um, is mindfulness and how to, how they're going to maintain their their mindfulness and presence in the birth space regardless of what's going on. So what I really try to instill in men is um, this: just as a pre just as a uh, a woman who's birthing needs to come to that place in herself that she can do this. I feel it's equally as valid for men in the birth space. So that's what I try to send them in with is this, this sense that they can do this. So regardless of what's going on, that they can find a place within themselves or even without themselves that they actually are consciously aware of the support that's around them and how to access it if and when they need to so that they can um, be with the birth experience and um, also maximise their experience of birth as well. So um, that's my um, short answer to that question. And um, what makes Dad feel more supported and particularly makes them feel more engaged from Fishy? Fishy, that's a great question. And um, I think in terms of uh, what makes them feel more engaged, I think receiving more engagement is one of the biggest keys here. It's um, one of the things that I've noticed is that um, the way antenatal education and like it, for, for dads, I think they're feeling like a lot of the focus is on, on mum and bub and what we need to do is find more ways to sometimes shift the focus and focus on dad and do it in a way that engages him, that acknowledges him, that um, educates him and that supports him, and that's what we need to do. Is, is we need to work out how how we can do this um, with the opportunities that we've got, and uh, it makes a difference. They, um, what I've observed in dads is when they've had positive experiences of being engaged and feeling like someone's really taken the time to to give them the focus for a while. Um, it makes a difference, and so what I feel like one of the things that dads are really wanting to hear um, and not getting a lot of is what is their role at birth. So a lot of them will go through antenatal ed classes, they'll have an idea around what to expect at birth, but they still have a very unclear idea about what their role actually is and how they can play it. And so that's where dads walk away with um, a lot of, uh, or a lack of confidence. Um, it, and also like a sense that they haven't um, been that um, engaged. So whenever we can take the opportunities that we've got just to turn the lens from mum and bub, flick it over to dad, give him something meaningful, um, it, you know, it, most dads will absolutely love that and they'll get something from it. So um, great question. I might just okay. move on to the next. Yeah, great. So, so what are dads? Oh. So, what aren't dads prepared for? So, I think I just t started to touch on that now. Um, what they're really wanting to know, what they're not prepared for, is how to effectively and confidently play their role at birth. So talking about the emotional and psychological preparation that is engaging and, and supportive in a way to get them to that space in themselves where they have that I can do this moment. And this is what most men aren't getting now. So 
what they're also wanting to know, men love practicality, so how to be a hands-on birth support partner. Um, being actively involved in supporting their partner with pain management options and just call this the, the dad's toolkit. So what can I enter the birth space with that I know that I can offer, I can do, um, I, I know when to go to the toolkit, I know what I'm looking for, um, and I, I have a confidence and I have the ability um, to, to, to use it. And that's what he's looking for, is a way to be useful, a way to be practical at birth as well, wherever possible. So, um, and one of, the, one of the most important ones, I believe, is how to be an advocate for their partner and the importance of their role as an advocate. Um, and I really do see, um, with the number of men being the primary support person for their partner out there, so I really do see that men are the, um, the last dash in there between their vulnerable partner and caregivers. And so they can really make a difference to the birth outcome and um, the birth story. And this is, um, you know, most men aren't really aware of the the gravity of the role that they have, that they play, um, the way that they can influence the birth, positively or negatively, um, and also just this important role of advocacy and um, and even, you know, what that means and uh, preparing them to play that effectively. And so I always, I always like to... Um, to share with men that um, that you know the best way to to go to roll with this um, role is to keep your caregivers on side. So try and build positive relationships with them, and I guess work with um, perhaps some of those um, you know masculine instincts to to launch in protector mode, and um, you know maybe lose their presence. So um, that's what I re I really like to focus on that here. And, um, you know, another really important one is, you know, where and how they can seek support if they need it. So what we really need to um, be doing is um, giving some uh, support to the support. And we all know this one um, for ourselves, like working in support roles, but we need people behind us too. And uh, really important for dads at birth to know that they've got um, someone somewhere to go um, that they can lean when, it, when they need it and um, when it's all going down. So um, I just see a comment here um, from Clarabelle, like hopefully by including dads, birth partners will ensure mothers come first. And I really just want to speak to that because it's a really good point and uh, it's one of the, the foundations to the work that I do because I do believe that by um, focusing on dads and in the work that I do and supporting dads to be at birth um, confidently, effectively and with presence and love, that it can make a significant difference to the birth outcome and experience. So like I see this, the, the, the big picture of this is better births, healthier babies, happier families, happier men, happier women, um, stronger families, um, healthier communities, and I see it as really big picture stuff, and I think that there's a, there's a really big difference that can be made here. So thanks for the comment, Clarabel. Okay, um, just um, speaking to a comment from um, Hannah, Barbara as well. Um, I did an essay and looked at fathers and their involvement. Most uh, most men said that half of the time they didn't feel involved and felt like they were in the way. Most wanted separate classes with a male midwife so they could ask man questions, their man questions. And this is a great point. Um, so just talking to it, um, most men said they didn't feel involved and I think that's how many men talk about their experience of um, 
going to antenatal appointments and classes that they're just not for me, I'm just there. Um, and this is what we need to change. We need to change the experience for the men um, so that they are feeling more involved and more, more part of the picture. Um, however we can do that. And that's one of the reasons why I do go to the antenatal classes. I, I'm, I make a point of going to the first session of a six, of an, every new six week program at my local hospital. And, um, so there's 22 of them this year. I'll be going to every one. And I go on the first night because it's when, um, I find the men are the most open and, um, most of the men are there. So their motivation's high. And I make a point of taking in some father-focused information and brochures and then I pull them aside and we spend that hour together and I feel like that's really giving them something for them. And it does make a, a difference um, at facilitating that space, being a man and being an experienced dad. And this is something that I'm very passionate about seeing more of is um, more men working in the birth space and even new parenting space, uh, the expecting dad space, um, so that we can begin to rebuild this um, this dialogue between uh, father to father and man to man, and start to normalise men getting together again just to talk about fatherhood and becoming a dad, and um, and masculinity can take that leap forward because it's what we need and it's what men are calling for. Um, and it's what women are calling for from their men as well. I believe it's the next, um, you know, it's the next leap forward for us. Um, so yeah, great, um, great point, Hannah. Um, I'm going to move on to the next slide. So just to offer an example of um, policy and um, practice that we can put in place that facilitate greater engagement and education and support for dads. This comes from the UK. So um, in the UK there's a peak fatherhood body called the Fatherhood Institute and in collaboration with the Royal College of Midwives they developed this uh, and the Department of Health by the looks of it, they developed this, um, this booklet uh, called uh, Top Tips for Involving Fathers in Maternity Care. So um, it actually outlines um, strategies and uh, techniques and methods that um, and practices for um, for midwives on how to um, involve fathers in maternity care, essentially. So basically, um, the work has been done to develop this within the health space, recognizing that dads are important and um, that this is a step forward. So um, this is just one example. Um, this is a brief booklet, uh, and the bigger booklet is this, which is um, reaching out. So um, this is the more comprehensive uh, guide that's been developed by the Fatherhood Institute in collaboration with the Royal College of Midwives. So. Basically what's included in this guide, um, so top tips to help with the engagement of fathers in antenatal, intrapartum, postnatal care and beyond. So there's also e examples of good practice. And uh, what I like about this is that there's also links to useful resources for health professionals and expecting new fathers. So it's for both, it's, it's for everyone. And I think this is a great example of something. So it's a policy that um, is across the board within the health space, the Royal College of Midwives in the UK. And I think it's something that we could look at doing everywhere is um, having uh, a real strategy around how we're going to bring dads in, how we're going to engage them, how we're going to educate them, how we're going to support them uh, in the maternity care space. So I'm just going to um, keep going with the presentation and uh, I'll get to some more questions. Um, hopefully I'll get the opportunity to answer a few more questions once I do. So um, 
expectant, well, yeah, what expectant dads need. So again, this is just developed from my experience and perspective um, based on what I've been exposed to, what I've seen, what I've learned um, from the work that I've been doing and the spaces that I have. So the expectant and new dad space definitely needs to evolve to meet their needs more than um, it presently has. So we need to just catch up with the with the leap that uh, we've made in dads being involved in birth and um, also uh, the calling that's coming from dads to be involved in birth. I think one of the greatest um, drivers of the evolution of masculinity of fatherhood is coming from the hearts of fathers. So we we have this amazing opportunity to embrace that calling from them by meeting their needs in any way that we can. So we, we, if we want to really make an impact on uh, masculinity and, and fatherhood, where there are a lot of issues in our communities and society and cultures and across the planet, this is one space where we can make a huge difference if we answer that calling. So um, if we take a more inclusive approach to birth preparation, so um, I'm talking here about father inclusive practice and there are a number of um, father in inclusive practice guides around. Um, it's uh, something again that's evolved over the last um, few decades as um, fatherhood has evolved and um, fatherhood has evolved more positively to where more men want to be actively and positively involved in their children's lives. And uh, we need to take a more father-focused and male-friendly um, approach to engagement, education, mentoring and support. So just catching on that point from um, Clara Bowles that, um, yeah, we need more men working in this space wherever possible. And um, we just uh, need to, um, yeah, take the opportunities w that we've got to, um, to, ma to make a difference for dads and give, that, give them something, give them something that they need. So, um, and more father-focused resources, brochures, videos, programs, um, that's um, part of the evolution as well. Just, um, yeah, again, uh, balancing out, creating a, a greater balance there. And it's not that, um, I think the, the space is tight. I think the focus um, is so much on mum and bub because the space is tight and resources are tight. And um, my perspective is, is I don't want less for mum and bub. I actually just want more in the space. I think we need to, I, I, I will also want more for mum and mum and baby. But I, I, I think dad need, need more as well. So um we need uh, we need more for everyone, not not less for anyone. Definitely not less. So social innovation in Australia, anyway, is um, is meeting is filling the need that's not being filled within the the health space. So we've got things like um, fear and bubs, uh, childbirth education for dads at the pub, which I present, um, and I made the decision to present. Beer and Bubs, I, well, part of it was a, a bit of a social experiment because I believe that it's a nice soft entry for men doing men's work and I love the idea of working with men and, and birth. So for me it was a great opportunity to do something with men and birth. Um, and it, I used that space as a pathway to bring uh, some of the men who rocked up to a Beer and bub session and got something out of it to bring them then through into the fatherhood preparation course. Um, and uh, that has worked on occasion for some men as they, they, they lean into the experience of fear and bubs and then um, they, uh, they, they want a taste of, um, you know, getting more of, of having the opportunity to get together with other, other men in the same boat as them and um, to hear from them, to learn from them and, um, and to get some man to man, father father to father engagement, education, mentoring, and support. So it um, it works really well. And um, this is just another one that I found on Facebook. Um, there's a midwifery service um, in Queensland, which is the the state north of me, which is um, doing something similar. So they call it Dear Blokes and Birth. And um, I believe this session is actually run by GP. And um, again, it's a man-only space, and it's just about providing a space for um, 
expectant dads to uh, to prepare for birth, and which I think is a fantastic idea. But my point is here is that social innovation is actually filling the need where um, the health base isn't currently meeting the need. So um, I believe this is a real um, sign that uh, government needs to um, to address start really addressing the need. And um, just to close, this picture here, um, I, I love this picture. It's, um, uh, it's a home birth, it's um, shortly after a home birth, and that is a dad in the picture there. He does have long hair. Um, and I really see that um, by supporting men to play their role at birth, that we're heading, we're taking a step in the direction towards normal birth, and I feel like that's a movement that we're also on at the moment is recognising that um, birth is a normal event, a normal, physical, biological, beautiful, wonderful, amazing, mysterious event, and that um, men can understand this too and men can play a part in that. And so by supporting men on this journey, that um, we're taking another step towards normal birth. So um, that's my presentation um, for tonight. So thank you very much for being part of it and um, thank you everyone who's uh, helped me be here to present it. And thank you so much, Dan. That was absolutely brilliant. Very um, inspiring. We've heard about um, the amazing work that you're doing in engaging dads, expectant fathers and new fathers and filling a gap that isn't um, currently currently being filled. So thank you so much and 